Hello humans and welcome to this brand new series called Book vs Movie. It's book versus movie, book versus movie, book versus movie, and books must always win. Yeah! This series is going to be the ultimate showdown between a book and its movie adaptation and also vice versa because we all know about those horrible Disney Ask Musical Camp Rock book of the film things. They were my childhood, but I don't understand them. In this series, the book and the movie will be pitted against each other in five different categories. Setting, characters, plot twists, endings, and overall enjoyment. Obviously, also these videos will contain spoilers, so if you haven't read the book or seen the movie, maybe add to your watch later list. So today's title to kill this brand new series is The Giver by Lois Lowry, a 1993 dystopian future novel turned into a 2014 dystopian romance movie. Round one, setting. So this story is based in the very distant future where everyone lives in communities and they're open about their feelings and everything is peaceful and very, very regulated. A big thing in these communities is ceremonies, which every single person has to attend. And this is where the differences kind of begin. In the book, every year, the whole community attends two full days of ceremonies, as there is one for each age. So the ceremony of twos and threes and fours and nines and twelves, that sort of thing. Whereas in the movie, there are only four ceremonies. There is the ceremony of naming, where babies are given homes. The ceremony of release into elsewhere, where old people are kind of let go into retirement. The ceremony of nines, where nine-year-olds are given bikes. And the ceremony of adults, where the 18-year-olds are assigned their jobs and leave their childhood behind. And the ceremony of adults is an altered version of the ceremony of 12s from the book. They basically just tap another six years onto the kid's childhood, which means you just add another six years onto our main character, Jonas. These extra years really made him appear more mature, which I think was really needed, and much more realistic that he would be given this job and this burden. So, in overall setting and kind of backstory, I have to give this round to the movie, because it was just more realistic and believable. Round two, characters. Now, character development is a big thing for me and just in general for stories in movies and in books. How a character grows up and learns and changes and enables the story to progress is a huge flag for me as to the quality of the actual piece. And in the case of The Giver, once again, the movie did it better. I think, again, because the main characters were that bit older, that meant there was more gravitas to the situation. The characters were allowed to have more colour and more quirks, because then the story was able to put more pressure on them to kind of get rid of those colours and quirks, because there was less time to do it in more of their life that had already been spent. Round three, plot twists. The biggest plot twist in the general story of both the book and the movie is that release to elsewhere or release to retirement or the ceremony of release for the elders is not actually being sent off somewhere to the provincial promised land. It's being killed. It's being injected with something that puts you down, basically. It's kind of like we're animals at the vet and they just boop and you're dead. And in finding out about this, Jonas also finds out that his father does this on a regular basis to babies that they don't have enough space for. And in regards to those realizations and these plot twists, I have to say, the book wins! Hurrah! Yes! Good job, book! Purely because the book really explores that concept of confusion and paranoia and disappointment in finding out that your dad isn't who he said he was. And I think that's something that everyone faces, realizing that your parents aren't perfect, but this is on a much bigger level because he realizes that his dad doesn't look after babies, he kills them. Round four, endings. A good conclusion can really make or break a movie. And the stupid cliffhanger conclusion in the book made me really angry and it wasn't particularly a great cliffhanger. So I just, I, it's going to the movie. It's just, it's going to the movie. Round five, overall enjoyment. In terms of overall fulfillment and kind of satisfaction, I have to go with the movie. Simply because it didn't just end. It tied off the loose knots, it kind of finished up the story, and that made it a lot more realistic. I wasn't as shaken and confused and angry and upset when the movie finished as opposed to when the book did. And normally I find emotions are a good kind of marker, if you've been able to invest in the story, but not so much this time around. So that means that this episode of Book vs Movie goes to the movie, which is really weird and save it this moment because it will probably never happen again because books. You can't beat books, except the movie just did. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, comment and subscribe for more of this kind of stuff. I love you all and goodbye. So I'm going to church really soon. Oh gosh, I'm going to church really soon. And I curled my hair and I've like plaited it and I'm wearing makeup because I haven't gotten much sleep recently. So at church I'm saying it's for 
filming, but here filming I'm going to say it's for church, so who knows what I'm actually wearing makeup for. But it's really weird, because you never wore makeup in public before, and you probably can't tell I'm wearing makeup right now, or if you're really good you can tell I've probably done a really crappy job of it. But there's like, concealer stick, or whatever it is, and then there's like a mousse thing, and then there's a... What else does I have on my face? Some sort of liquid. I don't know.